Hey everybody, this will be a demonstration of how to create Shepard tones using Super Collider. Shepard tone is a pretty well-known illusion, and there's certainly no shortage of places to hear Shepard tones on the internet. But in case you're unfamiliar, a Shepard tone is a sound that gives the impression that its pitch is perpetually rising or falling, without seeming to actually get any higher or lower. The composer Jean-Claude Rousset famously used Shepard tones in his electronic composition entitled Computer Suite from Little Boy. So anyway, Shepard tone is created by the superimposition of sine waves separated by octaves, each sine wave travels a span of maybe seven or eight octaves and fades in at the beginning and fades out at the end. Because the sine waves are separated like this, these fade-ins and fade-outs are staggered, so as a result, your brain never really notices when an individual sine wave vanishes. Instead, your focus just sort of jumps to a lower sine wave and the illusion is preserved. So here's my code. The first bit is my synth def, and this is just the function that SuperCollider will read when asked to produce sound. In this case, it's just a simple stereo sine oscillator. And next I define a function called playshep. It's useful to define a function because as you'll see, it's a good way of modularizing my code and I'll be able to call multiple instances of this function simultaneously. Uh, the arguments for this function are speed, volume, direction, and center frequency shift. Speed determines the rate in seconds at which SuperGlider will read through a single data table entry and ultimately determine how fast or slow the glissando is. A volume is just a simple amplitude scalar Direction determines if the glissando is ascending or descending, and center frequency shift is a little harder to explain, but essentially I have a table of MIDI note values, and center frequency shift is added to each value in this table. So the frequency at the loudest part of a given sine wave will be higher or lower, depending on this argument. And then I have some variables. Uh, these here, uh, pat0, pat1, and so on, these will become uh, patterns, uh, which will be used to synchronize the different sine waves. And you can see I've got nine of them. And MIDI array and AMP array are variables which will be uh, assigned to arrays. Uh, and the arrays will hold frequency and amplitude data. So the first thing I do is set MIDI array equal to the uh, array of numbers consisting of 6, 6.01, 6.02, etc., all the way to 113.99. Uh, this is SuperCollider shorthand for creating large arrays, this uh, double period here. Uh, there are 10,800 total numbers in this array, and I've chosen this number because it gives me lots of values to work with, and this means I'll get a fairly smooth glissando. It's also divisible by 12, and that makes it easy to use MIDI numbers when you're working with octaves. Next, I create a second array, which is uh, full of 10,800 blank indices. Uh, to fill it with amplitude values, I'm using a do loop, which iterates over the array of integers from negative 5400 to 5399. Again, that's 10,800 values. Uh, it uh, runs each of these integers into the function 1.000001 uh, to the power of the negative of the value squared, and it sets the outcome to the corresponding index in AMP array. Uh, so this probably looks a little weird, so I've got a graph to clarify what this looks like. So maybe you can't see the scale factors. So the peak of this bell curve is at 1 on the y-axis, and the x-axis numbers run from 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, etc. So the x-axis represents the array being sent into the do loop from negative 5400 to 5399, and the uh, y-axis represents what becomes AMP array. So for the first 3,000 or so values in AMP array, the value is very close to zero, and so we barely hear the corresponding sine wave. As we approach the middle of AMP array, or zero on the x-axis, the amplitude becomes louder and reaches its peak, and then decreases once again as we get further along in the array. So SuperCollider reads through the MIDI array and amplitude array simultaneously so that the uh, low and high frequencies correspond with low amplitudes, and mid-range frequencies correspond with high amplitudes. Uh, so now that we've got our uh, data tables, I check direction to see which direction we're headed. If the direction argument is positive, we essentially do nothing, since our MIDI array is already ascending. And if the direction is non-positive, then we reverse the array. Pretty simple. And last, we shift the uh, values in MIDI array by the center frequency argument. And now we've got our patterns. Here's a single pattern right here. Uh, I have nine nearly identical patterns, and I'm using P-mono. Pimano is one of the many very powerful pattern objects in SuperCollider. Uh, essentially, it creates an instance of a synth on the server and repeatedly updates the synth's arguments dynamically at a given time increment according to value patterns specified in the code. 
So I'm using the synthf called chip, which I defined at the beginning. Duration is the amount of time in seconds between argument updates, and we set that equal to the speed argument. Um, amp looks uh, a little confusing, but it's basically a sequential pattern which reads through the amplitude array indefinitely. So that's that right here. And then it's multiplied by a, uh, by a p-seg, which is a, a pattern which independently embeds values according to time rather than according to the duration argument. Here I'm ramping up from 0 to 1 over the course of 1 second and then staying at 1 indefinitely. The best way to understand this p-seg is to see it as an envelope that I'm using to fade in the sound itself, you know, so that it doesn't begin hideously with a big click. And then I'm multiplying it by volume, which uh, just scales the envelope in case there are multiple shepherd tones playing. And lastly, MIDI note is being set to a p-seq, which reads through the MIDI array sequentially. Now the only difference between this p-mono and the rest is that I've used the rotate method right here and right here on the two arrays. Uh, what rotate does is shift the values by the given number of indices. I've got nine patterns, and the arrays have 10,800 values, so I want to incrementally shift the arrays by 10,800 divided by 9, or 1,200 indices. So pattern 1 is rotated by 1,200, pattern 2 by 2,400, uh, and, and so on. So shifting the arrays like this keeps the different patterns synchronized at the octave while offsetting the start index in each array. And uh, now it's easier to see why I chose an array of 10,800 values. And the last thing I've done is create a uh, P spawner. And this is just yet another pattern which allows for dynamic stopping, starting, and synchronizing of patterns. It's probably not totally necessary here since the patterns are just running in parallel indefinitely. And uh, this is really a, a simple setup. But it's clean and it ensures that the patterns will truly be synchronized. And so that's the end of the function. So to create some sound, we boot the server and we just evaluate the function, passing in uh, the four values for its four arguments. So this first line um, runs through values at three hundredths of a second. Uh, the amplitude is just scaled down a bit. And um, uh, there's, we're descending because this is zero. And there's no center frequency shift. And here's how it sounds. example we've got uh, three shepherd tones that form a minor third with MIDI note shifts 0, 3, and 7 and you can see I've scaled down the amplitude accordingly to 0 0.33. I think this is actually a more convincing effect since the entrances and disappearances of individual sine waves are further masked by more offsetting. In addition to offsetting the sine waves by octaves, now they're offset by a minor third, a major third, and a perfect fifth as well. got a bunch of shepherd tones with uh, random speeds and random frequency shifts all descending. You can uh, just leave this one on for hours and you'll pretty much drive everyone insane.
last one is similar to the previous, except some are ascending and some are descending. Sounds like this. Shepherd tones and super collider. I don't claim that this is the easiest way or the most elegant way to create shepherd tones and super collider, nor am I using Risset's original equation for the amplitude bell curve. But this is how I envisioned it, and it works well enough. So, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. <laughs>